All right. It's working. Let's see for how long. All right. Back on the rooftop track. It's been a long time. Um, right now driving the OO with the very jittery Rocket 18 amp ESC that I very much dislike, but apparently if you don't drive it for five months, it mends itself. But it's really, really hard to work here. Uh, it's pretty low, low RPM. It's a slow track. Uh, you can see the track. I've just rebuilt it. It's still looking like crap right now. Uh, it's been under pretty much under the cover of the grass for five months and then pieced on a lot and all the wood kind of molded on the side. So the carpet itself is pretty good. Uh, I did the first cleanup. I still need to do a, a, a big cleanup, but so far so good. Uh, I've been away from the track, from social media and pretty much from the driving RC for about five months now. And I don't believe I'm going to get back much into social media because I kind of had my dose of it. But uh, I'll post from time to time, especially now that the weather is going to be a little bit better to be on the roof. And probably I'll do a little bit more uh, track videos. I want to do a little bit of go-kart. I put a go-kart on my 112. And... Um, We'll, we shall see. Maybe I'll do some updates on the, the pan car, uh, my vintage 375F1 is in pieces right now, I'm uh, just updating the front end, I just, just switched part around. Um, this seems to be getting pretty popular, the vintage, uh, there is a very cool guy that ordered uh, a buddy and wheels from France and is building his own. I think it's on RCF1, he's building it based on the F104 chassis, he's using my uh, C-hubs in the front, and same well base and uh, the 375 body of course. Well you know what, this is, well except that there is something weird happening on the braking, uh, this is pretty manageable. I'm telling you, if you buy one of those rockets, ESC, uh, 18 amp brushless, sensorless, all you have to do to remove the jittery feature that it has is leave it on the shelf for half a year and it works very well. Now you can still see that's, I don't know if you can hear, but that's pretty much for like a fifth of the throw. You just have like a Parkinson car. Then it gets better. But, oh, look, that's pretty good. I think this is worth trying on the on the RCP track. I might, I might go on the RCP track at some point. It's a little bit troublesome for me because it opens pretty late during the day. And uh, we shall see. If I have enough this job, I might go and shoot a little bit more over there. Otherwise, it's just annoying for me to leave. Uh, where I am for an hour drive and just go there in the evening. I prefer to be uh, at home in the evening, especially school starting again and so on. So we shall see. But I think, especially this ESC and this chassis with the, the wide wheels might be might be much better on the RCP track. I mean, I don't think any chassis can be really. <laughs> right on this track here, but I might see what what this uh, setup is worth, at least for the the speed and the high speed cornering and so on. And I've actually still haven't tried the the PCO on RCP so far, so we shall see. Um, this is not not bad. Uh, one of the problem I have. At the moment, as you can see, I have uh, reinstalled uh, my wooden bars to fit the corners, but there is a little bit of uh, double-sided tape that is sticking from the side, so if I actually hug the wood too close, the front bumper gets stuck over there, so that's something that's going to change. I have the, the white and red warning tapes that I'm going to put. I have a little bit left, so I think I should have enough 
at least to put on the sides and then the top of the wooden bars I'm going to put the white tape back uh, on it so that's where they were going to be more visible most of the scale accessories uh, decor that I had around the tracks are dead oh this is less sticking I guess it's getting dusty so I don't really have um, any more of the scale corners and so on that I had for the track because they didn't survive the mad monsoon weather of Hong Kong but it's all right it was it was good for when it lasted I'm gonna bring back the easy lap timer pretty soon once I have the track cleared out the, this is still hopefully working on the on my old laptop uh, I need to check what car I have the transponder I know the 07 and the uh, the F1 both have it, this one I don't think I have, but the, the F1 has it in the, basically under the halo here, and the 07 has it under the bonnet over there. So we will see when I drive them again. Uh, well, this is not so bad, you can see the carpet is fully coming back to life. So that's gonna need a little bit of compressed hair, but those... This setup, wow, it is really hot, god damn it. The ES is hot as well, which doesn't happen. The motor is pretty, pretty hot. You can still touch it, but this is unusual compared to the, the Mini Q motor and the ESE that I'm using on the other cars. They don't get hot like that, so I don't know. I've heard uh, when, I, when I wrote some comments a long time ago about this. Uh, Rocket DC being a piece of shit. Um, I've had some <laughs> agreements online that he was he was not a great DSC, but who knows? Now it's working. So maybe I was doing something wrong before, and it was like a, like French wine. It needed time to go from bitter to sweet. So, but this is pretty cool. I loved. Um, I love that body. I think I'm going to increase. Um, I'm going to put another piece of uh, plastic at the rear to have a more aggressive wing. I don't know about the side wing because the corner wing is good, but uh, just to try to stick that back end a little bit more on the ground. Although I don't know if it's going to change much because the body posts at the back are not really at the back. They are more like in the in the center of the body, kind of, like three quarter at the back. Um, so I'm not sure, but I'm gonna give it a try because I think this body on the higher speed track has potential for some pretty severe top speeds. But right now, um, I am driving with no, no. 65% uh, end point and I think I have a pretty severe exponential yeah I got minus 40 on the forward exponential uh, reverse I have the ABS turn on on the radio but I had a I still kind of have that problem but this is more uh, it's got nothing to do with the the ESC when the, on heavy braking the car seems to want to uh, turn a little bit so Sometimes it's a matter of diff. I think right now the, the problem is more in the front wheels. Uh, there was a bearing that seems to have seized a little bit. Uh, I think the right hand front tire, uh, front wheel was not turning great. So I have removed the bearing. I have WD-40, the whole thing. And it seems to be doing better, but obviously there is a, probably a difference. Um, in freedom between the front left and front right uh, bearing so I might have to do a full cleanup on that car I have not done anything at all I just took the car out of the box and started driving them again like if nothing has happened at all which is kind of what has happened so considering this is pretty good and I am quite happy about the overall bounciness it seems like the it's still bouncy as hell because the floor is insanely 
uh, irregular here. It's uh, underneath the carpet. It's uh, some kind of uh, isolation sticker with rubber and aluminum on the top. So it's a lot of different layers on top of each other. There's nothing, nothing flat at all. No tile or anything of that sort. But it seems that the a few months of uh, watering has compelled the carpet to hug the surface better so so it is still bouncy <laughs> I'm impaled still bouncy where the the underneath is, is really out of whack but other than that it's see there is a few bumps here with like just air bubbles but something alike but really a lot less than before so I'm pretty happy about that and uh, with all the wood uh, double-sided taped everywhere hopefully it's gonna work well I'm considering making the track for oval as well as this setup right now and I'm thinking about using the buggy a little bit more not only the small buggies but the big as well so I have left that area open over there in order to do uh, what I'm doing now this layout or just a large corner layout and I'm thinking about making that piece over there the aluminum bar here removable or I have uh, the jumps that I have from the tin foil so I might do a setup when I have uh, like a jump over here, a small jump instead of the corners, and then straight line jump to over there, and maybe in the grass and back over here, or outside and back inside here. Uh, so I can play around with the charisma as well as potentially my um, my 110, not the fast one, but I have some Tamiya. Um, I have a what's that called? It's not the sand buggy, but it's just like a DTO one, two-wheel drive with a small can motor at the back. So I think that could be that could be fun, especially on the on wet days, where I can drive with those. But well, look as as bad as it's ever looked. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the way it survived, considering the amount of rain it's received and. Um, the one that was on top of that, the, the grass one is now dying over there on the side. It's completely decomposed. So, I mean, everything considering, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, regarding SDR, everything is still ongoing. I have not done uh, pretty much anything new since the Lola Buddies for 112. They are not uh, on the website. I don't know why. I guess because I didn't put them there. Uh, seems like the 112 don't have much interest because I think people are uh, the 112 racers they just want race buddy they're not really interested in the either prototype chassis type that I'm making or um, the more scale look for the buddies although they're they're performing really well but it just can't compare with the shovel buddies uh, I've recently worked uh, on the design for uh, another brand that possibly is going to have uh, Ifmar um, Buddy for 112. So I hope this is going out. If it does, it will go out on my design channel, not my uh, remote control channel, because uh, of course this is not for my brand. Uh, so keep an eye. Maybe if you are not there, just Scarset Design, not Scarset Design Racing. I have. Um, the website I have my Facebook page my LinkedIn and everything which is the more not more professional but just purely design aspect of what I do nothing to do with RC and so under that umbrella I'm designing uh, if Mar buddy or a new American brand so I have the mold downstairs I'm not gonna show it to you because it is not mine to show but I understand that the, the Lolas that I've been doing for 112 are not really the cup of tea of 112 racers. Oh, yes, I know now. Oh, yeah, I see that. What I meant about being stuck on the tape. One thing that I have that I haven't really shown is the 110 size uh, Lotus 7 Caterham or Dunkerford. 
however you like to call it, is the same car. So this one, I am going, that's one thing I need to test, it's on my uh, TRF-102 chassis right now. Uh, really not well equipped because I'm running a 10.5 which is completely stupid, but that's what I had on hand. So i uh, not planning to purchase another 21 or another 17.5, so I have a 10.5 inside, it's way overpowered, it's not gonna run properly, but I can probably adjust just on the remote. And um, I just made the front fender with a 0.5 mm thick sheets, which is what I'm using for the, the mini Z size cars, but really for the 110, I thought it would be good for the lightness, but I need to redo them in one mil, so they are not so flimsy, so that's why I haven't driven it yet. I don't even know if I've shown any picture, maybe I have. It's basically uh, the same car as this one, like a club, club style uh, 7. The difference is uh, no windshield and it's got a complete roll cage that goes from the bonnet to the back. Other than that, it's pretty much the same, but instead of having the more modern that follow uh, the steering uh, wheel wells on top, it has the old school all the way to the back wheel wells. And this one has only uh, exhaust on one side. The 110 has exhaust on both sides, which are uh, plastic molded. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much the same car. Um, the shape is slightly different because it needs to fit around the 110 F1. But I will see. I will see how it goes. That is another multi-part body set, but uh, I will see how it works. If it, if it works as well as it looks uh, on the track, that's possibly something that I'm going to put on the web store. Although it's going to be like the 375 is going to be on the, the expensive side because it requires a lot of different um, sheets to make the um, bodies in two parts the wheel wells at the back and in the front are separated so that's four sheets of plastic for the body and then it has uh, headlights helmet roll cage which is a pretty big piece and uh, what else? Exhaust. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it for the hard plastic parts. But so it's a pretty extensive piece. And once again, um, I don't believe the F1 110 drivers are into driving scale. But who knows? That might change. So I don't know. Next time I have a chance to go on the on the larger track, um, if it's ready, I'm going to bring it as well to give it a try. We'll see. I might do a, a, a full F1 day at the track with all my F1 chassis and another with all my pan cars. I shall see. No plans. We'll see. Right now I'm a little bit of uh, in limbo uh, regarding everything professionally. So um, I'll see. The, the, the web store is of course always open. I'm always available uh, to answer any request for orders and stuff. I had to cancel a few orders of, uh, oh my god, this smells like very hot electronic. Let me bring the car back to see if it's this thing burning or a neighbor that's burning a plastic cat. Hmm, it's not this, so must be a plastic cat burning next door. Yeah, I had to cancel a few orders of uh, the 112 trike uh, buddy because I had some issue with the vacuum forming machine for some time and supply of the, the plastic sheets so I had to cancel I think two orders for Japan for that so I apologize uh, at the moment all the 112 things are pretty much uh, not available anymore the bigger scale as well just because the, um, they require me to stock too many things and the orders are way too little so I'm still, um, I'm still available for people contacting me directly and ordering it and just be patient on me uh, getting all the supplies ready for everything including you know FRP chassis or if people want them in carbon or whatnot um, although I don't 
have a lot of aluminium back in stock so I'm not sure really how many of the 112 and 110 I'm going to produce but I s probably have a couple left. Uh, for the minis it's still going as always, uh, the bodies, the chassis, I have, I didn't put online, I have an enormous stock, oh that's, that's the lipo cuts. Oh, that's a painful comeback. Yeah, I still have um, a lot of GL racing, quite big offsets, uh, spoke rims that I need to put on the web store, uh, that I need to clear, so there's going to be a clearance on that. And I think this is what smells. If there was smell, you would know. Smelling through the internet does not not there yet all right so that was a first drive in a while and well I have to report this is less shitty than last time when it comes to the the way the ESC behaves so tips to any rocket owner keep it on your shelf for half a year and then curse at it for a while and it it's gonna do the trick all right so uh, my head mounted camera is not ready to come back to film so I'm using the mobile now I'm gonna keep finishing to clean up and repaint and set up the track. I might do um, the next video when I try the buggy setup, maybe with my 110, who knows, because this is a pretty fun track for a big car as well, even though it's stupid. And uh, I'll have the charisma as well, though I have a, a, one of the steering link that broke, so I have to repair that. So, all in all, Hope everybody is keeping safe and sane during these absolutely stupid COVID times that never go away and that put everybody, including uh, myself, in pretty shitty situations. <laughs> but hope everybody is keeping a good spirit within all that garbage and keep having a way to enjoy their RC hobbies and families and, and whatnot and stay somewhat sane. So, I'll be back at some point. Once again, I'm not going to go crazy on the show social at least I don't have anything planned so it's gonna be on enough uh, but a little bit more on that is been like as I, I've been really away for some time now so I'm gonna keep playing with those two girls here this wasn't bad at all I'm pretty happy about the setup um, I can give you a little look before I shut down so you'll see what it was all about uh, let me bring the air as well hey it's crazy all right we can see it now so it is my pco i have a 260 milliamp uh, battery on the side which is from the Orlando Hunter I have the ugly rockets ESC 18 amp and I have this is year racing so that means it's a can from a factory with a sticker on it I don't know what it is it's a way too powerful I think it's 6005 kV or something like that's way too big for the use for the track here but it's, it's doing well. Um, those tires, I've seen better days, but this seems to be doing okay. These are the PN Racing. I have the wide rear. Uh, I think this is the um, the one for LM. And uh, okay offset, like I think one one or two mil offset in the front. So, And I was running with my one of my favorites, buddy, which is the Spade, which is of course an homage to the Kyosho Spada. So, here you go. Keep safe and sane, and at some point in the pretty near future, I'll be back with a few more videos. Alright, see you everybody. Bye-bye.